Tom here from Lauren Systems, and we're going to talk about WireGuard, specifically WireGuard and PFSense, but I must preface this video with the fact that this is all beta. I can't express that enough because people keep asking when it's ready, and it's ready when it's ready, and I don't have any predictions as to the day this will be coming out in full production, but the testing process has begun, which is really important. It is also important for me to say this is a development beta, again, because people will start putting this in production and wondering why it doesn't work properly. The point of this beta is to have people do the testing. We have begun the testing here at my office, and many others I know have joined in around the world with this, and it's definitely exciting. Uh, but there are bugs. They will have to be squashed. There was bugs the day one release, which day two release fixed those bugs uh, really happily. So uh, this is actually day two of testing, but I wanted to give some discussion and cover some of the topics related to WireGuard and PFSense. This is not going to be a full tutorial. The tutorial will come out once it is not beta. I just want to express that very clearly because I know there will be a lot of questions down below of people asking. Now, before we dive on to the details, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. Now, quick little background. The getting started building your own WireGuard VPN server, I have an entire breakdown video of that with that right up. So it's all time indexed and stamped and basically I'm using this to build another DigitalOcean server, the same premise I used in this video here that I walked through how to build your own WireGuard server to get this system connected with PFSense. Basically I'm only doing the server side here and I skip the whole Linux client side setup because I'm setting up PFSense instead. So if you are interested in a more in-depth tutorial on WireGuard, I do have one. Now, this is something I wanna cover as well. These are questions that came up with the other WireGuard video I did, and of course, they're going to come up a lot with PFSense. Very nice, do you have any details for support for second auth factor? And this is where uh, Jim P right away calls people out on, and properly so that this is a misconception with WireGuard. I've said this before about WireGuard is people say, oh, well, look how lightweight the code is and how few lines of code and et cetera, et cetera. The challenge really becomes when you don't have all these extra things like a user management system or a 2FA system that yes, there's a lot less code because there's a lot less functionality. I know WireGuard at its core is a very lightweight and easier to configure system, but I do wanna mention that PFSense is not building at this time per people at PFSense, a entire extra system on top of it to solve all those missing components. That's still kind of being left up to third party. They are doing the kernel integration. Speaking of kernel integration, if you want to know how the kernel got integrated in a BSD kernel, that's something you can thank the folks at PFSense for. They literally funded the development and sponsored it as the term to develop all the kernel functions of the WireGuard in BSD. I just like to bring that up because people look at NetGate as just some open source company, but they literally fund some of these things like that. And we all benefit from it because for example, other BSD projects can now pull the kernel that was sponsored by NetGate that has the updates for the code for WireGuard and take advantage of it. So just throwing it out there, something to think about. And this is a Reddit post where they announced it along with a blog post, et cetera. Uh, you can read through people's questions on here, but I will address that there's, that problem is not gonna be solved. Not by PFSense, I should say. And someone's already got their caps lock on and typing tail scale three times. Um, no, I don't plan to review it. It's a closed source proprietary product that does add though the functions that you're referring to of uh, managing WireGuard versus manually managing WireGuard. So I'm aware of the product. I just don't really have a use case for it right now. So I don't plan to review it. If that changes in the future, I'll do a video. Now the PFSense people have put together a WireGuard thing here. They also say it has no facilities for education. Uh, there is no service daemon to start and stop. There's only minimal logging from the kernel and uh, configuration is placed directly on interfaces. It has no concept of connection sessions. 
some of these are interesting because as a VPN protocol, normally you look at the handshakes of like OpenVPN and you have a status of it being up. It's a lot different just because of the way WireGuard works. It's actually a very quiet protocol with the exception of turning on some keep alive pings if you want them. Uh, being that it's kernel based, it doesn't actually create the traffic until you send a packet across. So the moment you send a packet, the tunnel's up. And when the tunnel goes away, the tunnel can go away unless you've told it to stay alive. So the next time a packet's sent, it will then build the tunnel again, and it stays up as long as that session is going, and any subsequent sessions will go over that tunnel. But if the tunnel goes away, it can just go quiet, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, pretty neat from a protocol standpoint, but of course, it's going to be confusing from users for setting up in here. Now, before we dive into this part, let's quickly cover the setup so you understand when I ping something where it's located. This is a Debian Lab test machine at 192.168.40.136. It is sitting natted behind my lab PFSense, which has a WAN IP of 192.168.3.217. A LAN, it's got more than one network interface, but we're narrowing the scope here to what's relevant to the video. 192.168.40.1 is, is the IP address that's the NAT for this one that's in the same range. And then it has a WireGuard interface that assigned 10.0.0.1 slash 24. It is behind my main PFSense, just so people know why the WAN on my lab has a private space IP address. Uh, and it's going to go out to the public internet and hit my DigitalOcean server, which has a WAN IP of 134.122.13.5. And then a Wire guard of 10.0.0.9. Now, this is just the basics to show that one, PFSense can ping it, and two, the Debian Lab can ping it. So now that you kind of get the lay of the land here of how these are set up, let's look at the settings itself. And we'll start here, VPN, wire guard. Now, when you add a tunnel, you can both set up this to receive and be like essentially the endpoint for the wire guard. So if you have remote clients remoting in or vice versa, it will add peers. So we can first build the interface here and then you would add each peer. So let's look at the ones we do have here. Now, don't worry about me showing all the interface keys because uh, not this moment, but after this video, I will regenerate new ones because I have clearly compromised my uh, key exposures that you'll end up seeing in here. This is all demo stuff anyways, but yes, I'm aware. So here we have, I called it WG and call it whatever you want. Uh, then we have the address. Then we have the list import and the interface keys. Now that sets this up so the if I were to use this as receiving, but we actually want this to allow clients to connect to the other end. So we build the peer, the WG DigitalOcean peer. So WG DigitalOcean, there's a public IP address. I just left it at default port. There's the public key, allowed IPs. We don't have to really fill any of this out. But what's confusing is where does it tell you that these tunnels are up or not? That is where I know there's going to be a little bit of challenge. And you kind of just have to look for yourself because WireGuard itself. Now, I think this is something hopefully they do integrate is the WG show command. So this is the WireGuard VPN demo. If I do IF config, you'll see there's the public IP address right here. There's the WireGuard address down here. And if I do a WG show, it shows the peers. Actually, I actually have more than one thing connected to this for the demo, but only thing relevant is this top peer. And yes, I blurred out my public IP address, but there's the peer and that it's connected and up running and working. All right, now we're going to SSH into the 192.168.3.217. This is the lab PFSense. And hey, look, we have this WireGuard interface. We'll get to that in a second. Let's go to the shell. And let's go ahead and ping 10.9. Hey, look, I can ping it. And to kind of get you a better idea, we can probably do this. And if I think, if I run IP, IP traffic monitor, and we're going to focus on this. As I said, it's a quiet protocol, so only when we do something, like we're going to ping it again. Hey, look, the DigitalOcean server can see the traffic. What about if we were to SSH to root at 10.9? Hey, look, it sees the SSH coming in from 10.1, our assigned IP to PFSense, and then 10.9 here. Um, I don't have the public key, so I get a permission denied. And for those of you that may have been asking, when you ping 10.9, it automatically adds the zeros. I'm actually paying 10.009. One of the reasons on my demos I started using this 
range because I can cheat and type less numbers. Makes it easier. Now, when PFSense adds these and you build the WireGuard tunnel, so far this is the way it's going to work, where we have WireGuard. Now I went over here to the interface assignments. And before, and actually we can do it really quickly, we'll go here to WireGuard and we'll just add a tunnel, enable YouTube, P I will just call it YouTube. Address, uh, 192.168.518. Now, nice thing is, if you notice, it's suggesting that you use 51821 because 51820 is used. Generate keys, save. Now, we didn't add peers because this would be like an inbound one, but now if we go over here to interface assignments, Hey, there's another one I can add. Now we've already added this one that I called WG Digital Ocean. And for those of you familiar with PFSense, uh, you know that when you add interfaces, you go to interfaces, then well, actually then firewall. Now that it's an interface, we can create rules and apply to it. And if we added another interface, we could add more rules to that one. So now you have this ability to build all these multiple interfaces in here. So for the layout and flow really is, feels well integrated into PFSense, but I know this is still a demo, this is development, so there may be changes that come along the way, which is why this is not at all considered a full tutorial. It's just kind of showing people that it's out there and does work and does function. Matter of fact, you can see the packets sent back and forth right here. Now, overall, I'm really liking the way it works. It does seem relatively fast for the demos I've done, but I'm not at all going to waste my time doing speed tests on a development version because, well, it's going to be all over the place probably. Um, so I'm not going to bother setting that up until it is in production. Same thing with, as I will repeat once more, that I'm not going to do the tutorial until it's in production. But I do encourage people who want to get started with this, start playing with it, uh, help with the bugs. Maybe you'll find some use cases that weren't thought of in some you know, or use cases that may be specific to you. And you can help out by going, hey, in this scenario, it doesn't really work. Now, things that aren't going to work still. DHCP server. I know this will come up because this came up a lot in my other Wirecard video. And it's me going back to like they have right here. It has no concept of connections or sessions, minimal logging, etc. But it also, it's, it's not like, it's going to solve your DHCP problem. You still have to for each one of the peers that you add and all the people you add in there. It's not like you can connect this to a user manager. It's not like you can just hand this over to a DHCP server. Um, that is just not part of the functionality that PFSense is probably going to solve with WireGuard. As I mentioned, this is something WireGuard built like the most minimal level of functionality and lets everyone else build their own things on top of it. Uh, this is you know why WireGuard, I think, will probably replace... IPsec tunnels and won't necessarily in the short term replace platforms like OpenVPN. It's not like the end user problem because, well, I know from connecting to uh, directory servers and radius servers that we've worked on projects with PFSense, this is a common issue. You have 300 users that you need authentication uh, that's dynamic and we need it tied to their other authentication such as Active Directory. And you can do that with PFSense and you can have an external authorization server that then allows these users to connect. Not so much with WireGuard. That is a completely different uh, engineering problem at the moment. And I mentioned I'm aware of TailScale, but there's probably going to be more companies coming along that put things on top of WireGuard to solve it, but that doesn't appear to be something, and I don't really think it's the spot, so to speak, that PFSense solves this. There's a lot of engineering and coding that has to go into this versus something like OpenVPN where you just, it's a facility built in, you just have to connect it to the directory servers and that works quite well in PFSense and will continue to be the most popular VPN, I believe, for uh, the foreseeable future uh, for doing mass users. But for site to sites, yeah, I'm excited for WireGuard to really come in here and be like, this is an easy way to get two sites to talk to each other. This is an easy way for me to take a server, one behind a NAT and one public. And great, this solves that site to site issue you have where sometimes people have dynamic IP address because this is one of the reasons this demo um, 
I didn't need to set public IP on my lab. As long as one of the WireGuard endpoints is there, I will be able to do it. Now in the future, like I said, I will be doing more videos on it. I am actively testing it because before I do videos on things, I spend time standing these up, testing them, tearing them down, making sure I understand them because I have to understand them very well to condense it down into a video. But of course, I'll leave links to this. I'll leave links to the WireGuard and uh, just so we can be clear on exactly which version I'm running because it is January 21st. And uh, this is, make it easier for people to read, 2.50A2021. 0120.2350. That is the version I did this test on. So if you updated the very first implementation of the experimental that came out, um, you will have some issues because I, I did as well and had to modify code to get it working. Uh, now they pushed that code change in there that now works as of the one I downloaded just before this video, which came out sometime several hours ago. And I updated it and like, hey, it fixed all the other little bugs. So um, that's why I decided to do a video today to raise some awareness. Uh, this is only available, once again, in the latest development snapshots. Uh, this is not for production use. I will say once more, um, would you run this at home, Tom? Yeah, I would run this at home. I will say that because this is something I'll be experimenting uh, in my lab here and me and my staff will probably do some testing by setting up some of our home pf sensors with it because you know hey why not seems like a fun thing to play with uh, and that's how we learn and that's how we'll get better at it so when this does come to production we'll already be well versed on it all right and thanks and thank you for making it to the end of the video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more content from the channel hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like youtube to notify you when new videos come out if you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.